Hello everyone, I'm Anna Harps and welcome to my channel. I will be discussing all things reality TV over here. Today I am going to be discussing Season 5, Episode 11, 90 Day Fiancé, Before the 90 Days. Before I begin, if you like my video, make sure that you like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell down below. And then that way you'll be notified each time I upload a video. So the first couple that I am going to be discussing this week is Usman and Kimberly. So if you remember last week, Kimberly had given Usman an ultimatum that if he didn't speak with her son and if they didn't have a relationship before she left Nigeria, that the friendship and the relationship was over with. So, I guess Usman had second thoughts about being in a relationship with her, being that his meal ticket was getting ready to get cut off. So, last week the scene ended with Usman and Kimberly underneath the covers. This week's episode opened up with Usman and Kimberly still up underneath the covers, and Kimberly let us in that they had actually did the deed. So Usman confirmed it and said that he didn't have a relationship with her in the Nigerian way because he wanted to make sure that she could still walk properly. And that's a good thing for Kimberly because she's already not need and pigeon toed. So that day they go to a spice farm and they taste all different types of spices and aphrodisiacs. And Usman makes her a queen of Spice Island. He puts on, um, what, what do you call it, like a crown, and he has on a crown, and they profess their love for each other. But he asked Kimberly if he could speak with her because he had to tell her something. Now, what he had to tell her was the video that she came over there to watch him make, and the video that she uh, semi-directed was a video about a real person and a real relationship. His with his ex-girlfriend Zara. So the scene ends with Kimberly walking off. So I don't know where this relationship is going to go from there. She really had nothing to do with uh, Zara and Usman. So we'll see how she takes that bit of information. The second couple that I want to talk to you about is Ben and Mahogany. Remember, Ben is over in Lima, Peru, and he has, uh, Mahogany didn't pick him from, up from the airport. She made him wait two hours at the restaurant, and um, she finally showed up. So, at the restaurant, Ben told Mahogany that he wanted to meet her parents. And Mahogany, like, looked mortified. And Ben was like, and I want to meet him tonight. So anyway, Ben arrives at a house. Mahogany opens up the door. And Ben noticed that there weren't any pictures of Mahogany anywhere to be found. And that it was her apartment. Now, Ben was under the assumption that the parents were interfering in the relationship. And that Mahogany lived with her parents. That's why he wanted to meet her parents. So Mahogany's parents show up. The father is looking at Ben like he's some internet freak. The mother is just kind of like looking at Ben as he professes his unrequited love for their daughter. She doesn't speak English that well, but she's like side-eyed and Ben like, you know, what do you want with my daughter? Ben seems to think that him and Mahogany have a spiritual relationship. But Ben, I can tell you, my God did not send you over to Parima, Lima, Peru, which are overgrown eggs. Mahogany is 22. Okay, you found that out from her uh, father. She had told you that she was 24. Okay, and you're 40-something. Ben, I mean, yo, I mean, do you think that your father Abraham or somebody? So anyway, the meeting goes uh, semi-well. And uh, Ben leaves out, and he's having second thoughts about Mahogany because, number one, she lied about her age. She's not 24. She's 22. The apartment didn't um, seem to be hers, and she hadn't told the parents much about Ben other than they were friends. 
So we'll see how this relationship develops because the next episode shows Ben eating ice cream with three of Mahogany's friends and they're all sitting up there like four schoolgirls. So we'll see where this relationship goes. The next couple that I want to talk to you about is Gino and Jasmine. If you remember last week, they had this big blow up because Gino had sent nude pictures of Jasmine to his ex-girlfriend and Jasmine was packing her things. She was so humiliated and she said that she never wanted to see Gino again because of him sending the pictures to um, the ex-girlfriend. But I guess she must have gotten over that because this scene opens up with them getting ready to leave the private island. The, you know, they're laughing and they're joking around. And Jasmine throws a shirt to Gino. And she was like, here, I took your shirt because I thought that I probably would never see you again. Gino tells Jasmine, well, um, I took something of yours as well. I found one of your fingernails on the floor in the bathroom and I put it in my suitcase because I thought that I would never see you again and I wanted something to remind me of you. Gino, a fingernail? You giving me creep vibes, dude. So anyway, they leave the island and they're headed to Western Panama because Jasmine wants Gino to meet her mother. And she has expressed to Gino that he would have to take off his hat. Okay, Gino has plans of going to ask Jasmine's mom if he could marry her. Well, when they first arrived at the island, Gino had went to, um, it appeared to be a pawn shop, but it was like this rinky-dink uh, jewelry store, and he spent a whopping $275 on an engagement ring for Jasmine. I mean, Gino walked up out of the jewelry store, like, you know, he was balling on a budget. I mean, he like popped his collar like he had really did the dang thing. So I'm curious to see how Jasmine is going to react to this, um, what is it, Jack in the Box uh, ring that he's about to present to her in front of the mom. So that scene ended there with Gino sitting in the house he had the hat on. So, it would be a good thing if Jasmine's mother told Gino, yes, I, I give you my blessings to marry my daughter, only if you take that hat off. And I want Gino to take that hat off as well, because I need to really get a good look at this head. Because from what I saw when Jasmine snatched his hat off, his head seemed to be shaped like a Kool-Aid pitcher. But anyway, we'll see next week whether or not Jasmine's mom gives Gino her blessings and whether or not Jasmine actually accepts the proposal. So the next couple that I want to talk to you about is Memphis and Hamza. So if you remember, Memphis is in Tunisia. She's getting ready to marry um, Hamza. It opens up with Hamza telling Memphis that he's having second thoughts about getting married. And Hamza, and Memphis was like, why? And he was like, I'm scared of you. You know, you already had one uh, relationship, two relationships. Um, you're, you're, you're divorced. I mean, what's going to be the demise of me? So he also felt that Memphis um, lied to him. I was being deceitful to him because she had expressed to him that she had slept over her ex-husband's house. And he was having a hard time, you know, getting over that because he doesn't know what happened over there. So she asked the cameraman men to go away and she takes him in the room and she explains to him that she was like in a really dark black place and she needed some moral support and that her ex-husband would help her with the children. The reason why she was in such a black place is because she had failed her state boards the first time and, um, you know, it really um, put her in a slump. And her ex-husband helped her, get, helped her get through that. So Hamza decides that um, he is going to continue on with the relationship and that he was going to marry her. So let's see how that relationship unfolds. Now, Let's talk about Mike and Hermena. Okay. 
The episode opens up with Mike and Hermana in a cab. And they're going wedding dress shopping. And Hermana thinks that it's really weird, and I do as well, because you know the man is not supposed to see the woman in the wedding dress until the actual wedding day. But Mike said that he wanted to accompany Hermana because he wanted to see her happy. He wanted to see her response when she tried on the dress because she hasn't shown any emotion towards marrying him thus far. So Hermana tries on the dress. The dress is a lovely dress. She actually really likes it. She puts her street clothes back on and she comes back in the sitting area where Mike is waiting for her. And she told Mike that she would rather have the plastic surgery, that she wanted breast augmentation and she wanted a tummy tuck because she wanted to be a model. Now, I don't know who she plans on modeling for because I don't see Tom Ford or Cynthia Bailey from The Real Housewives of Atlanta calling her for any um, casting shows. But anyway, they go home and they're laying in the bed. It's her manna, Mike, her two kids. They appear to be like maybe four years old and eight years old. They're all laying in the bed. So Mike asked Hermana if he could speak with her, and he asked her if she planned on being affectionate with him and having adult time with him while he was there. And she said no. And she said, as a matter of fact, I would prefer if you would go sleep in the room with the kids. So she's kicking him out of the bed that he bought and sending him in the room with the kids so that he could sleep in the bed that he bought as well. So anyway... Mike has a heart-to-heart -heart with Hermana. And he was just like, you know, Hermana, hey, I mean, what's going on here? Do you love me? Do you want to marry me? Hermana said, no. Okay, so we're going to see what develops with this particular couple. So, that ends my review of 90 Day Fiancé Season 5, Episode 11. If you liked the video, make sure that you like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell down below. Anna Harps, bye!